Okay, so in this lab here, we're going to try to determine the solubility product constant, the KSP for the salt PBI2. How we're going to be making that salt here is by mixing a solution of 0.010 molar lead 2 nitrate and a 0.020 molar potassium iodide solution. Uh, what I have in front here is I have test tubes A through F. Uh, I've already uh, put in the water and put in the lead nitrate solutions here. Uh, what we're going to do here, I've also pre-measured the volumes of the potassium iodide. We're just going to make some observations of uh, when the precipitate forms. Remember the concentration would have to be high enough. We have to be over the KSP at this temperature uh, for a precipitate to start forming. Uh, this is just our first look at uh, in which uh, dilution factors uh, the precipitate uh, the solid actually does crash out of the solution. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the ones that uh, have formed precipitate here, we're going to steadily heat it up to see if we can uh, start dissolving a little bit of it and uh, examine a little bit of uh, trial uh, KSP or a Q value. So I'm just going to start off with test tube uh, one here. So we have 10 milliliters of our potassium iodide here, 10 milliliters of lead nitrate. We'll just make an observation of what happens here. So mix that in. So we see the formation of that lead uh, two iodide here as a yellow precipitate. I'm just going to go through, uh, these have been steadily diluted. We've kept the total volume at 20 uh, milliliters, so you can make a fair comparison here. So that's for test tube two, uh, with a little bit of water inside of here. Uh, this one here is test tube three, or test tube C. Right. Continue on, test tube four. They're steadily getting more and more dilute, so uh, we should be able to see uh, which ones uh, have the concentrations high enough to actually form precipitate. Test tube 5, and then we have test tube 6. So we could just make a qualitative observation right now. Uh, although there is lead to nitrate and potassium iodide in all six solutions here, uh, we notice a precipitate definitely forming in the first three. Maybe the concentrations aren't high enough to actually uh, form precipitate in these latter three here. We're going to take these three here that have formed precipitate, uh, put them in a hot water bath here and try to uh, dissolve the precipitate. Remember the trial KSP and the actual KSP value would change depending on the temperature. We're just going to monitor at what temperature these ones uh, look like they're starting to break up. Thanks guys. Okay, so let me just show you these test tubes again here. I've since labeled them A through D. Earlier we had seen the precipitate form here in ABC. As I left it a little bit over time here, we see a trace amount forming in D. I'm also going to be putting this in the hot water bath here. That way we can figure out when this precipitate is also well. So in a second here, I'm just going to drop into the hot water bath. I'm going to crank up the hot plate. We're going to try to note down the temperature at which this precipitate, the yellow powder, looks like it's starting to dissolve. I'm going to use a stir stick to try to mash up some of the powder to just get some of the dissolving happening. But again, all we're noting down is the temperature when this happens. So uh, let me just put this uh, all into the hot water bath here. And then I'm just going to crank up the hot plate. Uh, we're going from the highest concentrations in A all the way down to D. So right now here the hot water bath is uh, 37 degrees or so. Hopefully you can see it from the thermometer there. Uh, again, I'm just going to use a glass stir rod here to try to mash up some of the powder. Right. Just want to make sure the temperature is uniform inside the test tube as it is in the hot water bath. So the temperature has dropped a little bit uh, when I put in these test tubes here. Uh, we'll just give it a second for this to warm up again. For the hot water bath here, I filled up the surrounding solution. That's what the thermometer is uh, sensing the temperature of right now. Um, we want to make sure that the water level in the hot water bath is actually higher uh, than the volumes inside the test tube to make sure that uh, the whole test tube itself equilibrates to that temperature there. Right, so looks like the temperature is starting to rise again here. Uh, we're back at the 37 that we were at uh, initially. 
and all we're going to do is we're going to note down the temperature when it looks like the precipitate starts to dissolve. There was only a trace amount in this test tube D, that's why I'm expecting this is probably going to be the first one that's actually going to dissolve away. taking a little while for the hot water bath to heat up here. We're at about 38 degrees here. So when we are at room temperature here, there was still a trace amount of this yellow precipitate. Now that the temperature here is increasing, we're getting close to 40 degrees here, starting with our first test tube, test tube D. Okay. You notice here that the yellow has uh, dissolved away. So I'd say for test tube D here, you can note down that temperature here as 40.0. That's when that precipitate started uh, dissolving away. Take this away here, again you can see the, basically the yellow precipitate is gone. Right? So that leaves us with these three in front of us here, A, B, C. I'm going to be using a new stir rod here. Remember A was the most concentrated, uh, as we went to C we're getting less and less concentrated. We had diluted it with water, so I'm expecting C is going to be the next one that's going to um, dissolve away. It's totally possible that even when the water bath here, it might end up uh, boiling. And then when it's boiling, maybe the precipitate still hasn't disappeared yet. So that's totally possible. Uh, but that's sort of the limit that we have uh, from a water bath. So uh, looking at test tube C here, I'm still seeing uh, definitely some yellow precipitate left over. We're at about 43 degrees right now. Let's just make an observation about uh, test tube A here. Uh, you'll notice here that the yellow precipitate has sort of uh, set out at the bottom. It may look very clear at the top, but we've learned in our uh, chapter that uh, this one here would be a saturated solution. In fact, the precipitate has already been maximally dissolved in the liquid. It's only what's left over that actually settles out in the bottom. So if I can mash it up a little bit here, again using a fresh stir rod, you can see that dissolving a little bit better. Remember the powder is actually in equilibrium with the saturated solution above. The rate of dissolving is equal to the rate of recrystallization. So that's when the particles are a little bit more suspended in test tube A here. We're at about 50 degrees here. We still see a trace of yellow uh, inside the test tube, so we'll warm it up for a little bit longer. And again, all we're noting down is the temperature when it looks like this precipitate dissolves. We know KSP here as a KEQ. Uh, only temperature can change uh, the actual value. So as the temperature here gets hot enough, as the um, new KSP here uh, hits the trial ion uh, product inside the solution, uh, we should see that the precipitate uh, starts to dissolve. up uh, solution B. This will be the next one that we take a look at here. The lead iodide is more dense than the solution in front of it, so that's why it sort of powders out at the bottom. So looking into test tube C here, this looks fairly good here. 
we're not really seeing a trace of yellow anymore. So at this temperature here, uh, let's make it 56.0 degrees, plus minus 0 0.5 degrees. Okay. Uh, this one here has dissolved away. Now we're just down to the last two here. Solution A would be the most concentrated one here that uh, wasn't uh, diluted with any water to begin with. Solution B had a little bit of water. We tried to keep the total volume at 20 just to make your dilution calculation simple. But again, what we're noting here is the temperature at which uh, this thing dissolves. And now the hot water bath is uh, about 60 degrees here. You do want to try to keep your thermometer from touching the sides of the beaker. Okay. So that way you're sensing the temperature of the water uh, and not necessarily uh, the glass. Depending on how well I did these dilutions here, we'll see if uh, by the time we get to boiling, I can at least um, dissolve some of this precipitate here. Because it's totally possible that uh, although this precipitate here should dissolve here, because my water bath would be limited by 100 degrees, that's when my liquid would start dissolving. Maybe by that point here, it actually hasn't dissolved away yet. I'm using the stir stick just to suspend some of those particles in solution here, try to make sure that the temperature is uniform between the test tube itself and the beaker inside. Hot water bath is reading about 65 degrees. Hot plates are also not uniformly uh, heating, so that's why we use a water bath here. I'm hoping um, the heat uh, gets spread around the water uh, pretty uh, evenly, so that uh, as it heats up the test tube, uh, it should be able to be enough to actually dissolve up the powder. It's a little strange, it's looking like uh, test tube A is actually starting to dissolve better than test tube B. Okay. We'll just leave it in for a second here. The hot water bath is about 70 degrees right now. We had started off with the same standard lead to nitrate solution and potassium iodide solution. Uh, the only difference between these test tubes here is the amount of water that we added to uh, dissolve it into 20 milliliters. So the thermometer is reading about 72 degrees here. Make sure you're gentle when you use the stir stick here. Okay, I've had uh, in the past here people poke through the bottom of the test tube here because they're hitting it too hard. Again, surprisingly, test tube A is looking like it's actually dissolving better than test tube B. We can talk about in your experimental error uh, what could have happened that is giving us this uh, observation here. So uh, let's take a reading there. Test tube A is pretty much uh, dissolved, as is test tube B as well. Okay, and both of them are occurring at about uh, 78 degrees or so. Okay, you may want to make some sort of qualitative observations. Okay. As the acetylene is getting hotter and hotter, you may not want to be uh, holding it with your hands. So you can always use the test tube clamp here. Uh, you can grasp the test tubes. Okay, and deal with it that way. Okay. 
So we'll just leave it at that there. So test tube B has basically fully dissolved here by about uh, 79 degrees or so. And similarly with test tube A. Okay. So both of those are fairly close. Uh, you can discuss in your error analysis uh, why that happened. Okay. One more zoomed in look at them. If I take these out of the hot water bath and let them equilibrate back to room temperature, I would expect the precipitate to start forming again. Okay. So it's only because I've been heating them, uh, that's why um, the solid has dissolved. Thanks guys.